Once you've built a basic nano mouse, it's time to uh, add sensors. Uh, you're going to need a few jumper wires, a 100 ohm resistor, a 10,000 ohm resistor, and the emitter detector pair from SparkFun. You'll see the emitter has a yellow dot on top and the detector has a red dot on top. And the first step is to cut this little notch on the front of your breadboard off because it's going to get in the way. I am going to show you how to do the center emitter and you can use what you learned from this to do the left and right emitters. So the first step is to plug this red jumper into um, D3 here. And I suggest that you follow the exact um, positions if you want to use the make using the sample code that I uh, show you how to program for this robot down the road easier. Then we're going to put the emi emitter in this left hand slot and I'm going to clip the lengths of the legs accordingly. Once that's done, it's time to solder the jumper to the emitter. It can be a little bit tricky. Once that connection is made, it's time to connect um, the other end of this emitter to the negative power rail. I should be using technical terms like uh, anode and cathode, but if you follow the video, just like I'm showing it, it'll come out correctly anyways. So, I've snipped the resistors so that I can plug it into this power rail. And now I'm going to bend it so that it's in line with the leg of that IR emitter. I'm going to cut it accordingly, and I'll cut the end of the emitter accordingly so that they're just the right lengths and overlap about three-eighths of an inch or so. All right. And right now I'm making it look really easy, but I actually uh, prepared everything in advance and actually slipped these emitters and detectors into their slots beforehand just to loosen up the um, plastic a little bit. I designed it to be pretty tight so that it would uh, hold them securely. So when you do it, you're probably going to have a little bit more trouble. That's to be expected. Okay. Now we're going to hook up the detectors leg to the positive power rail and we're going to bend it and cut it so that it uh, fits just like so. helps to have a nice soldering iron. This one's making the job very easy. The first time I did this, it was a painfully slow process because I had a really bad soldering iron. 
don't feel bad if it takes you a while. The last step is to uh, connect this other, your last jumper wire to uh, pin D5. That's what I'm using for the front detector. And get it to reach all the way up to the other leg of the detector. This is the trickiest soldering connection because we actually have to have three things soldered together here. We're creating what's called a voltage divider um, and then we're tapping into it and that allows us to uh, detect a change in voltage that's the result of a change in resistance based on the amount of infrared light that is um, hitting the IR detector. To do this, we're going to bend the resistor about like so, so I can plug one end into a negative power rail. The other end is going to connect to this connection we already made here between the, the signal wire, the green wire, and the detector. So now you can see I have three things lined up to be soldered together here. I'm all lined up just like so. And then solder them together. And that was by far easier than it normally is. I lucked out. I'm tug on it a little bit just to make sure it's firm. And it looks good. So to describe what's going on here, uh, the reason I chose to make this wire red is because I'm actually going to use this digital pin as an output that I can flash on or off. But whenever it's on, it's going to be sending energy through this emitter which travels through to the negative power rail. That's all this does. It flashes on and off and this just supplies power. On the other side, uh, electricity is always going to be traveling through this red wire into the detector and then back out through this resistor. This resistor has a constant resistance but the detector has a variable resistance that depends on the amount of light that's hitting it, the amount of infrared light that's hitting it. I tap into this the, the voltage that I can detect here using the green wire and I can detect a change in the voltage as a result in the change of resistance to figure out how much light my robot is seeing. Uh, when you wire your robot together I suggest making the left emitter, hooking the left emitter to pin D4, the front emitter to pin D3 as I have done here and then the right emitter to pin D2. I'll show you on a completed robot. So here's the right emitter to pin, uh, or the left emitter to pin D4, the front emitter to D3, and the right emitter to pin D2. And then the left detector should be to pin A7, the front detector to pin A6, and the right detector to pin A5. So it looks like I made a slight mistake on my robot over here. I'm going to go ahead and fix that real quick and switch the front detector to pin A6. That's why it wasn't quite stretching as much as it, it looked, looked like it wasn't quite reaching long enough there. Okay. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and solder these uh, wires on, solder the wires and detectors and resistors on just as I have and do something and do the same type of thing right here for your robot doing the right and left emitters and the right and left detectors on your own. Notice how I saw or I put the uh, in, or the detector closest to the wheel on this side and I put the detector closest to the wheel on this side. That's so that when I get readings 
they're consistent. One isn't slightly in front of the other. I didn't uh, alternate their positions. Um, if you have any other uh, questions about how to do it, take a very close look at how it's lined up right here.